Hola guys, hola. Hola, hola guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Roxanne. If it's your first time here, then welcome. I want to talk to you guys about the last five books that I have read recently. The first book that I actually want to talk about was a DNF for me. It is The Matchmakers List by Sonia Lali. This was one of my most anticipated releases of the year. It was going to be um, a contemporary romance, a diverse contemporary romance, um, but I DNF'd it. Um, I would say, I think it was about, it was about 13 or 14 chapters in, because, uh, for a few things, I really wasn't that interested in the characters themselves, um, if, very quickly in the beginning of the book, the main character, if I'm not mistaken, refers to other women, at, um, by, like, their breast size, um, you know, I was like, oh, the, the, that's for, like, the C cups or some something along those lines, and so immediately I was like, okay, um, and then we go back and forth, there, this could have been, and it probably was, that that was the intention of the story, was to be this beautiful story between this grandmother and the granddaughter, um, and the granddaughter trying to reconcile tradition with her modern way of living and then the grandmother also trying to reconcile her tradition and her desire for what the type of lifestyle she wants her granddaughter to have um, and the way that things are changing and, and just the ways that, that her granddaughter actually is. Um, so that's I think that was the intention of the story and that's I think ultimately what it is I just didn't like how it got there we it's very annoying the way that the main character goes from wanting her grandmother to stop setting her up um and, and being like okay she's she's got to stop this is this is the last one um that she's this is the last day she's setting me up on it has to end at some point and then being shocked when it doesn't and sort of being shocked at the fact that her grandmother will continue to find ways to set her up on dates and try to arrange a marriage for her and it's like she doesn't understand that time and time again her grandmother is going to change because that's the way that her grandmother is and this is the things that she wants to do um but she so she's like okay it's gonna stop and then oh shock when it doesn't and it's like D -d -d why are you shocked you're a smart woman it's not gonna it's not gonna change unless you sit down and have a conversation with your grandmother and tell her what you actually want but instead of doing that what she does is that she lies to her grandmother and pretends to be gay so that her grandmother stops setting her up on dates with men and it's just like that's not the way to do that um there yeah there's just all these ways that that could have been dealt with that didn't require that and i was just, I, to me then i was just like okay i'm not really interested i don't like the way that this author is deciding to tell this this story and then i don't like this plot device whatever plot decision she made either so i decided to just just decided to dnf it um i did a buddy read with my friend olive over at a book olive for daisy jones and the six by taylor jenkins read she wrote the seven husbands of evelyn hugo which was one of my favorite reads of uh last year if i'm not mistaken has it been a year or two years um anyway so in in many ways there are some parallels between the two stories this is about a sort of tell all um about a celebrity or celebrity group that was very very famous at some point um and that something happened with them that the public doesn't really know about um so i can definitely see some of the some of the the parallels there and i've, I've seen that mention in a few reviews some of them more on the negative side that they didn't like that this seems to be like her new niche way of telling a story where she creates this huge celebrity or persona and then finds a way to s tell us and sort of the public within the story about this person um and and that's fair i can see the parallels there but uh this is a completely different environment for the story rock and roll really felt alive in this story for me i really really enjoyed getting to see how Daisy Jones and the Six as a band got to be what, what they were, um, who the Six were, who the um, the brothers were that became the Six and then became Daisy Jones and the Six. And I, I really enjoyed learning about Daisy herself. Um, and uh, another thing that I 
Sorry, my memory card was full. Um, I think that's the point. I don't think they're supposed to be these super likable characters. I think you're so that's. I can't think of many like. 70s rock and rollers that were drugged up that I think would make amazing people. Um, I mean, they might be now, and I think you grow, you you see their growth in the storytelling from who they were as these rock stars and who they are now as people. Um, aside from from the limelight, but I mean, I, I don't think that she meant to write them as these incredibly likable people. Um, Overall, I really enjoyed it. I couldn't put it down. I needed to, I really wanted to know what was going on between Daisy and the rest of the of the people in the band, the different relationships within the, the band and those um, that each of them had with like family members outside of the band. Um, I, I think that, you know, she did it, Taylor Jenkins Reid did it again. She created a story that I really, really cared about. Some people that I really felt were alive, I hate that I don't get to listen to the the songs that they talk about because they talk a lot about the lyrics and what the lyrics meant and, and how they were trying to communicate. Some of the band members were trying to communicate with each other through these lyrics. And um, the, the time it took to get Daisy to sing s certain songs in certain ways and it is so upsetting that I can't hear this music. I think this would make a great movie. Um, and and I, I, I really hope that it gets made into a movie someday because I, I really think it would be very entertaining and the music would be great. Uh, overall, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I, I love the way that it talks about... Um, drugs and it doesn't ever glorify them and they know they talk about how monotonous it became and how the different ways in which they dealt about them and their each of their breaking point um i love the way the discussions of love and how you care for people and the different kinds of love that can exist between different kinds of people um and different marriages actually this one and another book that i'm going to talk about later in this video conversations with friends talk about very specific love that exists and trust that exists within a marriage and how that can change when other people um come into the mix and and the love that you can feel for for these different people and how it can manifest in different ways and how um you deal with that with everybody involved i think she talks about a lot of different things there's a lot of levels to this story that i didn't expect going in and i really recommend it i really really enjoyed it if you liked uh the seven husbands of evelyn hugo i think you will more likely than not also enjoy this one i get the hype and i'm really really glad that i read it Let's go to talk about this one, uh, Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. This one is very, very different. Um, it, it's very, it is a very quiet, sort of not much happens story, which you guys know that I like those a lot. It's very much an exploration of these characters. Um, Sally Rooney really wants to explore different societal norms, uh, most of which in this novel is is, is marriage and relationships and the love between two people and I wouldn't say that this is a story about cheating so much as a story about a like a, a marriage that also has each individual has relationships with other people um, and how everybody deals with that. So this is about two college students that meet this like artistic couple. One's a photographer and a writer, and one is a an actor. And it's about the relationship that each of these uh, female um, college students has with each of the individuals in the marriage. And that's pretty much what it's about. And it's and it's the exploration of how they all have relationships with each other and how everybody deals with it. Um, this has complex characters that are, again, not always likable, um, but I found myself still caring about what happened to them and, and sort of wanting to know, maybe out of nosiness more than anything else, um, how everything turned out. And um, we have our main characters, bisexual, and her best friend, who's a strong side character, is a lesbian. Um, so I read this during the month of June, so it you know, counts as a queer novel, which is awesome. Um, 
and and I think the the way it was written is not like how I like most of my writing, which is to be very evocative and flowery and dreamlike and very descriptive. This is I've seen it be described as millennial. I'm not really sure what that means. Um, but I guess it is very succinct and to the point and um, sometimes a bit, I don't want to say random, but like you can see the different directions that the, the thoughts of the character takes. It's almost like you can just see the run of their thoughts, um, but there's a purpose to it. So I don't really want to say that it's random. It just feels different. It feels different. I guess, I don't know if that's what they mean by millennial, but um, overall I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed all the questions that she posed and, and the different conversations really that each of these individuals has and the stances in which they take and how sometimes being feeling very powerfully about something can make you also just a very unlikable person because of the way in which you share those thoughts with other people and and can kind of put others down in in sharing your opinion you belittle those around you um and how that can happen a lot in like sort of intellectual circles and things like that. I think there's a lot that went into this pretty short novel and I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was interesting um, and refreshing and weird and different in ways that a lot of other books that I've read haven't really been. I read Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McKinson. This book has been everywhere so I have I have three relatively hyped books in this novel, which is not usually my thing, but I love this. It is so much fun and so entertaining. It is about our first son, our American first son, falling in love with the royal prince and the shenanigans that ensue. And it is hilarious and our, um, our main character is um, he's Mexican. I think his mom is like Mexican and white and his dad is Mexican. Um, but he, you really see his culture and then in the ways that he talks and then the, the, his, the things he eats and the things he says. It's, it's really, it was really nice. It's a really refreshing, cute, just a fun novel to read during the summertime. It's, it's fun really is the, the best way that I can think about it. Um, I'm really happy that I bought it and that I read it. Um, I think it's a great pick for June, for Pride Month, and just the rest of the year if you're looking for something, um, you know, cute and romantic and funny. Uh, the banter between them is hilarious and witty banter is really just the way to my heart. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. The uh, the only thing I, from the audiobook, the narrator sometimes didn't pronounce things in Spanish correctly, which was really annoying, but overall I don't really have any qualms about this book at all. I love the <laughs> alternate political um, um, situation going on in the United States at this, like, God, I wish this was the situation we were currently in. Like, um, his, uh, our first son's mom is like a divorced Mexican woman and she seems awesome. And she's the one who won in this world um, after Obama's second term. And it's just like this alternate political landscape that I wish was our reality, but unfortunately it is not. So it was great to escape into this every now and then to read it. I couldn't put it down. It was great. I really recommend it. Then um, also for Pride, I read a novella called Once Ghosted, Twice Shy by Alyssa Cole. This is Reluctant Rules 2.5. So I haven't read Relu Reluctant Rules what reluctant royals number two but the characters that this one um discusses are the main character is pre is present in the first book and then you hear about kind of what's going on um in this novella in the first book so you're not lost or anything like that and it's really short and it's just a love story between two women in new york and it was great i have no complaints about it there's nothing particularly memorable or anything like that um 
except that it was just enjoyable and I liked it. I can't wait to read the rest of um, the Reluctant Royals series and really dive deep into Alyssa Cole because I've been liking reading romance this year and I think she might become a favorite of mine. Then I read, oh, I forgot to get it, I read a mystery early this month called The Widows of Malabar Hill by Sujata Masi. This is the first in a mystery of 1920s India. And this, if you like the Ashley Weaver um, books, you I think you'll really, really like this because this is the same sort of feeling I got, the same sort of, of hello, the same sort of mystery, historical mystery. Um, Except this one is set in India and it is told in two times, the 19 teens and the 1920s. And it talks about Parveen, who is our main character. She currently works in her father's law firm and she is not a lawyer because as a woman she can't be, but she does help. Um, she kind of solicits for them and helps and she becomes involved in this estate settlement where um, so this Muslim man dies and leaves three widows behind and she becomes involved in trying to settle his estate and what they are going to get after his passing and in diving deep into their lives she realizes that there's a lot of questionable things going on with regards to the man who was appointed to take care of the widows after the husband's passing and a death occurs and a murder must be solved and she is involved deeply in that. Um, we have a strong side character who is lesbian also which is great. Um, a lot of talk about uh, you know the oppression of women and it's a really cool feminist novel that I loved. I love the relationship between her and her father is so awesome. Um, both her parents are great but she has like the special relationship with her dad um, who really despite the times believes that she can be all of these awesome things like she can be a lawyer and it's it's fun and you can take the bar and pass it and be a kick-ass lawyer and but he is also aware of the limitations of their time so it's like this cool balance that he's able to find for her and um he allows her to be this like headstrong woman um while also guiding her and always supporting her and it was so entertaining and sharp i really really liked it um i think it's going to be a new favorite mystery series of mine i have the the arc for the second one the Sacha for moonstone um ready to go which i'm really excited about this has already been released as a hardcover uh back in may but i think i'm gonna wait until it's a paperback to buy it because i want my copies to match so those are the last few books that i have read recently um i am currently reading the number one detective ladies agency by andrew mccall smith it's somewhere up there and after that um i've decided to join next month's pick for the cozy murder mystery club like book club which I'll link the channel down below. I talked about, or the Twitter down below. I talked about it during my last video, one of my last videos, my sort of get ready with me life update currently reading video. Um, and it is Death by Dumpling is the uh, cozy murder mystery pick for the next month. And a script has it, so I'm gonna read that. Um, let's see, what else do I have pending? I have a few Cozy Murder Mysteries in Libby ready to go, as well as Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell and The Storied Life of AJ Fickery, which I'm excited to get to. I own both of those, so I'm trying to get through my physical TBR. Um, and that's that. As always, thank you for watching and for listening. Let me know if you guys have read any of these and what you thought and what you're currently reading. Love you guys very much.